How's it going everybody? It's your boy Zyfold. Welcome back to another video. This video is going to be about dynamic programming and memorization. So one of the easiest functions to do a video like this on is the Fibonacci sequence. So for anyone who doesn't know, the Fibonacci sequence is where you take your two previous numbers, add them together to get your current number. It starts at 1. These are assumed. This is negative 2 and negative 1. So or 0 and negative 1, and then you just add your two previous numbers, so 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, so on and so forth. You get some pretty big numbers really fast. So I'm going to do a little bit of self-promotion here. My GitHub is down in the description. I will link all of my videos or my code inside of my GitHub so you guys can look along as you're watching the video. So let's get into it. So first things first is we're going to open up VS Code and we're going to have our main function here. This is just the basic cargo build of what you get when you make a new project. We're going to do a function of Fibonacci. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a Fibonacci function that doesn't use memorization just so I can show you the quality of life changes you get. The amount of speed you get with memorization is insane. So we're going to do a number of colon and it's going to be an unsigned integer of 64 bits so we want 64 bits because it is quite the large number and we're going to just do our basic Fibonacci sequence here just as a little bit of a demonstration so we're going to do if if our number is less than or equal to one we do need a break case when we do make recursive functions else it will run forever and rust will panic so if it is less than or equal to 1, is the number has to be 1. So this is the first, num first number in the digit, which is always going to be the default to 1, and then obviously 0, just in case that occurs, because that can occur sometimes, or if anyone implements a number that's less than 1, which unsigned 64 should prevent that, which is a reason why I put unsigned instead of an integer 64, because we do not need all that memory. Now we're going to do a second return case, which this is just going to be the Fibonacci number of n minus 1 and plus the Fibonacci number of n minus 2, which is the two previous numbers. Make sure you get n not m just for quality here. And then we need to make a return type on this. We're going to do a pointer to a u64. Then now our Fibonacci should be fully implemented. So that only took a few minutes, not even, and then we're going to want to call that. Now this is not a very good way of implementing Fibonacci. So we're going to do a print statement here, just the print line, exclamation point. Uh, <clears throat> and I don't know why I'm spacing what those are called. Brackets and then quotations and then curly brackets, and then we're going to want to call the Fibonacci. We're going to do an easy one here of a 5. And then we're going to want to do bigger numbers to just show you the raw speed that this can occur. So we're going to do 5, 15, 25, we'll go up to 40, and then this will never be solved by this function, but we will do 90, just so we can showcase how fast our later function is. So we're going to run this here by clicking the play button. I'm going to close out this air sign. That's from previous thing, so then 8. So that 40, that took a couple seconds, and that 90 will never hit. So we're going to control C out of that, exit out of the terminal, and we will get memorization working. So first things first is we need to make our array. So we're going to let a mutable memo, which is going to be short for memory, because I don't want to spell that out a few times. We're going to do a U64. We're going to make this 100 long. Be mindful of how many numbers you want. This always needs to be one more of whatever size you're doing. So I'm just doing 100 to be safe, and then we're going to make this array be filled with 100 zeros, just so we can do an if statement later on. So now that we have our memory, now we need to make our Fibonacci be able to take memory. So we're going to do a comma up here, we're just going to type in memo and colon. We're going to make this a pointer or borrow a mutable array that is fitted without 64 unsigned integers or a 64-bit unsigned integer. I think that's the oxymoron, but... And then in order to get all these scary red errors out, we just gotta do a comma memo. 
simply going to paste this in. We can hit save. It fixes all those. These ones are a little bit different. So if we save this, as it says it's good, but if you run this program, it's going to crash on you. So we do need to do a bar out mutable just to tell that the array can use it. And then we're going to copy all of these. And then we'll just hit the comma, slap all these bad boys in here. And then once we have all these in here, we can hit save. That removes all of our red errors, but although we've implemented this function here, is it's not going to be any faster than it was. So if we, the next thing we want to do is we want to return our memo in this function, and we're going to want to do of n. And now if we let this sit, it should yell at us. That means we need to make this an un, a u sized instead of an unsigned 64-bit integer. That's just one of Rust's quirks. You can't index on anything other than that u-size. And then we need to add our memory to this. And then we're going to do our n as a u-size for our storage. And now this is also not going to do anything because we need to see if it is already in memory or not. It's going to run this regardless. So we're going to do an if statement here. So we're going to do if our memory of n as u size is equal equal to zero. So we're, we put 100 empty zeros into this array. So we need to check to see if it works. And in order to quickly move lines in VS Code, you just hold down Alt and you can use your arrow keys. Once we have this saved here, now this should be our memorization in Fibonacci. So if we hit run here, is it should be almost instantaneous. We're going to close out some of these errors. But you can see that it did 90 in like a split second. And then another benefit with this is since we're using a mutable array, our array here carries on to all of our future existence. So this 90 was faster because this 40 had already occurred. If we did a raw 90, it would be a little bit slower than it was for that between those two numbers. So this should run and then this is going to be slow, but then all the other ones after that are going to be instant because we already know what it is before it even started. And now for the next section is we are going to do a code chef problem. I will also link this into the bottom. I did this one at MSOE at a coding competition in person. So this problem is stated with Professor Plum's like likes recursion, but his students typically find it confusing during a recent faculty meeting his mind wandered he invented the following new recursive mathematical function so we have our three different things here so we have our so if all values of n are less than negative five we do h n plus four and then h n of two of n plus two and then for numbers between negative five and two we just do n times two and then for any number greater than 2, we do h of n minus 8 minus h of n minus 4 plus h of n minus 3. So this one's fairly easy. And then also another thing we need to keep in mind is our constraints. So the only numbers we're going to be taking in this function, according to this coding competition, is between negative 75 and positive 95. So when we make our array, we do need to keep that in mind to know what our constraints are. So we'll go back to VS Code here and I have these all copied and ready to be pasted of the numbers we need. And I will remove all of this code and then I will link it to you guys in the description. And then we can just take out the entire Fibonacci sequence. So I have my references here. We're gonna make a new function. We're gonna call it H just to remain consistent of what we want here. This will need to take in a integer. So we're just gonna do N colon i32 we don't need that much uh, accuracy on this and it does need to be an integer or i32 because we need negative numbers for this function i'm going to point to an i32 to release so in here is we're going to have three different if statements so we need to know if it is either negative five and also if you guys want to try this one before i even do it you can click on the link before i do any solved so I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, for everyone who's not doing that, we're gonna do n is less than negative five. That's gonna be our first case. So if it's less than negative five, do this. Else, if it is greater than negative five, but less than two, which is assumed if it's gotten this far, so we're just gonna do a less than two. 
to do a square the bracket and then we'll finish this out and then we're just assuming everything at this point is going to be greater than 2. So with our if statement here on our first one is we're going to call n or h of n plus 4 plus h of n plus plus 2 and then we're going to have to return this so we're going to do a return on here. This is our bad code that's going to take forever to solve and we're going to do n times 2 for this middle one and then for this last one we are going to do a return where it is h of n minus 8 minus h of n minus 4 plus h of n minus 3. And I got one n wrong here with an n, so we're going to go there, convert that to an n. So if we test this here, we're going to do a bad test case to begin with. So we're going to do if h, we're going to put in our quotation marks, our brackets, a comma. We're going to do if h is negative 75, and then just test how long this takes. So we're going to hit play, let it load, and it took quite a few seconds to get that number. So we're going to quit out of this. Now it's time to implement the memorization of this function. So we're going to do another let mutable. We're going to do memo for memory. Now this array has to be a little bit different for what we're doing since we have to go to negative 75. And arrays can't hold negative numbers. Well, they can hold negative numbers, but you can't represent an index of a negative number. So we have to change some things. So negative 75 plus 95 is 170. So we're going to make this 170 long. We're going to fill all of it with 0. So we're going to do another box bracket, 0, comma, 170, and then a semicolon to finish that out. Now we have our memory of 170 slots. So we need to be able to push that into our h function. So we're going to do a comma up here. We're going to do a, call it memo. We're going to do a pointer to a, a mutable i32 function, which pointers are also known as borrowing in Rust. And then we have to, we're going to make a lot of errors here, so we have to be able to put those into here, which is that's just going to be a comma and a memo. And then we can copy this and then paste it into all of these h functions just to cure all these errors. And like again, this one is going to cause another error because we have to make this able to borrow the memo. So now that we have our memory borrowed, <clears throat> if we run this, it's going to be the same as it was before. We got to turn these return statements into our memory, which we're going to do of n. Now, currently, since this is not going to do negative numbers, if we do this n as a u size, this will not work. We have to actually offset it. So we're going to do n of plus 75 to make that a better number and we have to do equals and then since all of these are going to be the same we're going to copy this and change our return types to the equals mem and then at the end here we're going to return our memo which is just going to be this function all right so now we have this implemented Alrighty, uh, editor Xifold here. Um, it does not currently work. I fix it later. So what this does here is just force this all into our memory, and then it offsets it by the 75, so we can have our negative numbers be memorized. So now, if we hit run, is this should be instantaneous, which it is. It's not. And then I think also we need to check to see if these are already in here. So we're going to do an if statement for each one of these and we have to see if the number n is already taken. So we're going to do memo of the n plus 75 as u size. So we have to see if that is already in here, which I think I can do this at the beginning. So we're just going to all push that up and then highlight all of this, hit tab, if that is does not equal zero, wrong, that should be if it equals zero, then we're going to throw all of this and all to move that up into here, 
else we're going to return this. So now if we hit play, is this should be a lot faster, so as soon as it compiles and runs... Oof, I did something wrong. Alright, I looked here, I actually did not equals, it needs to be a double equal, so if we hit play... It's instantaneous, and it's the same number as it was. So that's all we need, and then we'll do multiple of these here, just at more extreme numbers. So we'll do 95 to test out our limits. Oops, that was a panic because I gotta make this 171 for our extra room so we can store all of our numbers. So then all those are instant, and that's memorization. So just another plug, I looked at my analytics, I met like 99.6% of people aren't subscribed, so if you got to this video, if you got to this part of the video, please feel free to subscribe, uh, follow my GitHub, you'll find my new projects there, and I'll sometimes post my project before on my GitHub, and then you guys can see a video on it, so it's kind of like a little sneak peek, you'll get more information there of me following or setting up videos prior to their upload. So make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment something. Know how I'm doing. I really like to know. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.